Then the Lord said to Moses, rise early in the morning and stand. He's saying, I want you to stand, to rise early. I don't want you to wait until the problem is so bad. I want you to rise early and when that problem just first starts, stand. Are you standing? Are you standing on the inside? My husband says, I'm standing on the inside. He says that to me. Okay, then the, then the Lord said to Moses, rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. There are some Pharaohs that you need to stand against. There are some Pharaohs that you need to stand up to. There are some Pharaohs, there are some assignments that you must stand up to. And he says, I want you to arise and I want you to stand up early. Stand early, stand early. In other words, in the morning. In other words, right in the very beginning of that deal, I want you to stand up. I don't want you to sit down. Stop sitting on the job. You have a job to do for Jesus. Somebody say, yes, uh, yes, I have a job to do for Jesus, and I'm going to rise up early. I'm rising, and I'm going to stand before that Pharaoh. Moses had to stand before Pharaoh. Moses was told, go, go again, go again, go again, ten times, go again. But he had the victory. How many times are you willing to go and stand before your Pharaoh? How many times are you willing to stand and pray again? How many times are you willing to stand and pray again now, even though the door is shut, even though the rebellious one continues to mock? How many times are you willing to pray again, even though that feral spirit looks you in the eye and mocks you? How many times are you willing to stand again? As many times as it takes. That's what it is. Build spiritual muscles, absolutely. So he says, then the Lord said to Moses, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, oh God, listen to this. Say to him, some people are standing with their mouths shut. You need to open your mouth and speak some things to that Pharaoh spirit that's trying to rob from you. You need to rise up early, stand and speak to it. Speak to that problem. Speak to that situation. Tell it what to do. You need to decree your future. You need to say, tell, speak forth a thing and it shall be established so that light will shine upon your ways. When you speak, the demons flee. When you speak, you're going to establish something with your very words. Amen? Do we take the word seriously here? Yes, absolutely. We just read it. The Lord said to Moses, rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, are you speaking to that circumstance? Are you speaking to the Pharaoh in your life? Because you need to be. You need to be. Because that's the problem. Too many Christians just have their mouths shut. And they're not speaking to the things they need to be speaking to. And instead, they're speaking out of the, they're speaking things that they shouldn't be speaking, fear and worry problems and discouragement instead of speaking right to that demon right to that circumstance right to that situation as if it was a person standing right in front of you and you tell it to go loosen off of my loved one loosen off of my body command you to go right now you don't get do you know that last on thursday just this our midweek service somebody that came and he said to me after he left, he, he sent me a text message. And he said, you know, I really got a $100 bill, and it was for my birthday. That was coming up. And he said, that's, that's what I had was $100. The Lord was testing me, he says to me. He sends this to me in a text message. He says, the Lord was testing me because that was a gift that someone gave me, and I was already planning on offering the $100 bill. And being a man of faith, he said, absolutely, I'm going to give it. He says, do you know? Not even on but two hundred dollars. Uh, God gave him back double because when you're obedient, uh, God brings the increase. But what did he do? He stood in obedience to the word when God told him to do something and he did it, right? He did. He could have said no. But instead, he activated his faith, and he is a man of faith. And he said, okay, bless God, I'm going to give this. And he was trusting that God was going to return. So when, when you do the same, when you say, Lord, I thank you, I'm trusting you, I'm, gonna, I'm doing this. If you call me to do something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to speak to that mountain, and it's going to be level. It has to be leveled. It has to come down. The mountain has to come down. Why? We're in the story of Exodus right now. We're talking about Moses, and we have been for a number of weeks now. And so this is a powerful story, and we are taking our time. Say, taking our time. 
because we're going to get everything that we need to get from this passage and from this section of scripture right now because we're not going to allow anything to be robbed from us. There are so many things God wants to give you guys, all of us, all of us. Faith is rising all throughout the room, every single person. And, and I believe that even as we're, we're walking through, as if we're walking through the story ourselves, putting ourselves in this story, you're going to see the Pharaoh be removed. You're going to see the Pharaoh in your life be removed. He will back down. That Pharaoh may be your, your loved ones. That Pharaoh may be an assignment upon your own body. But you're going to see the Pharaoh be removed. Moses was persistent. And we are going to be persistent. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We're still on 13. We're only going to go to... Thank you. Everyone's like, what? Um, I don't know. 26, 27, something like that. There will be breakfast served at about, <laughs> about 7 in the morning, I think. <laughs> oh, what a glorious day that's going to be. It's going to happen, you know. It's going to happen. I believe when we have our own building, that's going to happen. We're going to be like, tag, you're it. Who's the next preacher? You're it. Tag, you're it. It'll be like in the midnight hour. Tag, you're it. Tag, you're it. And I'll be praying, and there will be dancing, and there will be, and there'll be preaching, and there'll be some people eating donuts in the other room. But then they'll come back because they're ready for more. They're ready for more. They're ready for more. I'm not kidding. You guys know I'm not kidding. Thank you, Jesus, for our own building. It's coming. Somebody say, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it's here, it's here. Come on, woman of faith, who said that? It's here, it's here, it's here. Woohoo! Lord, however much you want us to read from that, I really can't just, I'm not going to let myself be limited just because, you know, I, I have to let the spirit of the living God lead. So however much we get to, we get to. We'll just pick up the next time. So the Lord said to Moses, rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. Anytime that you want to serve God, anytime that the enemy catches wind that you are doing, you're on a mission for God, of course he's going to oppose. Of course, you know, he's saying, let my people go that they may what? Serve me. So that they may serve me. The minute that the enemy knows that your assignment is to serve him, everything comes against you. Everything comes against your family. The minute that you say yes to Jesus, I give you my life, I give you everything. The enemy is like, oh God, now they're a, they're a problem. Now I need to go ahead and come against them and their family. Now I need to do something. Now I need to try to stop them. Now I need to try to discourage them. Now I need to act. But if you don't have that kind of, that sold out, that sold out spirit that says, I'm all in. I'm all in, Jesus, I'm all in. If you're just kind of, well, you know, I kind of just put my feet in the water a little bit, you know, but, you know, I'm not going to be that radical. You know what? Chances are you're also not very effective in the kingdom. And the enemy is not trying to rob from you as much. He always does, but not as much. But I'll tell you right now, you also don't get the satisfaction of, oh, say the glory of God. Oh, I'm wrecked in your presence, Lord. I just want you, Lord. More of you, Lord, more of you, more of you, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what. This joy that I have, no man can take because no man gave it. This joy that I have, no man can take because no man gave it. Jesus gave it. Jesus gave it. Did Jesus give it to you? This joy. See, problems can't take it away. Problems can't take it away. I've already committed my life to Jesus. And so that we can what? Let him go so that we can serve Jesus, right? Wasn't that what they're? Let him go so they can serve, serve God. And then everything started coming against them. Everything started coming against them. But we're just going to praise our way through it. We're just going to praise our way through no matter what. Because you know what? He's worth it. What did David say? I'm not going to give to God that which costs me nothing. It's costly. The anointing is costly. Some people don't know because they just... They see what they see, and they just go, oh, my gosh, that's wonderful. I want that. Would you just pray? Would you just impart that? I just want an impartation. Well, you can't impart that which you're not capable of carrying. 
But if you will be willing to be sold out to Jesus, if you're willing to receive everything, no matter what, and say, Lord, no matter what, I'm going to serve you. Let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go that they may serve you, me, says the Lord, right? No matter what, I'm going to serve you. No matter what, I'm going to serve you. No matter what, no matter what comes against me, no matter what comes against my children, no matter what comes against my marriage, no matter what comes against my body, no matter what comes against my finances, no matter what. Do you have a no matter what within you? Because if you don't have a no matter what within you, then we got to back up. We have to back way up. Are we sold out for Jesus in this room? Lift your hands if you are. Sold out. Like 100%, I am sold out for Jesus. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. My mind is made up. That's right. My mind is made up. My mind is, was made up a long time ago. You know that he'll test you at your most vulnerable time and one of the testings that I had was when I had said this started praying this long long time ago start praying this prayer Lord no matter what I will serve you Lord no matter what I will serve you I said that in tears I did not pray this just oh that'd be a neat thing to pray no I said this in intercession in and through tears and I meant every word of it I actually thought every word through sat there in prayer and said I will serve you no matter what and when you talk that slow you can actually think about what you're saying and so so I that was a prayer of mine and of course of course the enemy tried to come against me at the very prayer right and so at the time at that time, one of our, our kids was not doing very well at all. And just in rebellion and just, you know, not, not doing well. And it was not at home either. And I was driving the car, and I get to the corner. I get to the end of the street. And I hear my very prayer that I spoke in my prayer room but I heard it from the enemy's voice, and it was mocking. It was mocking me. It was very, it was a mocking tone, and he said, now remember, my firstborn, I don't know where they were. I didn't know where they were, right? Not home. Rebellion. I, I have no idea. Not a very comfortable place to be. It's mama. But I stood, I sat there in the car, and I hear the enemy's voice. No matter what, huh? Just in that very tone, no matter what, huh? And I knew that it was the enemy mocking me. And I knew that this was a moment of truth. And honestly, I was like this righteous anger welled up within me. And I was like, I wasn't even, it's like I could hear it over here. And I literally like kind of just like turned my shoulders. Like I'm not even going to give you the time of day to even look your way. I'm not even going to give you the time of day to look your way. And I turned this way, and I said to the Lord who is always with me, the Lord who is always with you, the Lord who is strong in battle, the Lord who is strong and mighty. And I said, yes, Lord. It wasn't even God talking to me. The devil was trying to mock me, but I'm not going to return stupidity for stupidity. So I turned to the Lord, and I said, yes, Lord. I will serve you. And the minute I said that, I heard the Lord say to me, one life for the life of many. And I thought, oh, no. Does that mean she's going to die? And then immediately I said, Lord, she's yours, and I'm yours. Let it be done unto me according to your will according to your word sold out sold out will it cost you oh this is just a little drop in the bucket this story but it's still part of what's in the bucket but I'll tell you what God's faithful God is faithful 
When you choose to serve him, let my people go that they may serve me. This is what the Lord told Moses to tell Pharaoh. And this is what God is saying to you right now. Will you, will you have that heart that no matter what, what Pharaoh is standing before you, you're going to speak to the mountain, but you're going to be totally committed in your spirit, man, that no matter what, you're going to serve God. No matter what, Lord, I will serve you. No matter what, I choose you, Lord. No matter what the cost is, no matter what the price is, I am sold out. Moses, who was drawn out of the water, who was God's chosen vessel to be a deliverer of God's people, right? But God wants to do the same in your life. God wants to choose you, and I believe he's already done so for many of you. And I believe many of you have also have really truly committed everything to him, everything. And you've had many of those moments like what I was referring to, as have I. But you continue to press in because you know it's the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Because you know that his word says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. Surely goodness and mercy. I expect goodness. I expect mercy to follow me. I expect healing. I expect signs and wonders. Why? Because I'm so great. It's because God is so great. It's because his presence is with us. It's because we know that God is faithful and he cannot deny his name. It's his character. It's who he is. He can't deny his own character, right? He's faithful. He's faithful.